Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. This session focuses on what is jargon. I hope and expect by the end of this session you would be able to understand the term and its implications and applications in sociolinguistics. Well, my dear students, when it comes to defining the term jargon, I would say it is special words or expressions used by a profession or group that are difficult for others to understand. The type of language that is used in a particular context and may not be well understood outside that context is called a jargon. Well, uh, what kind of context it is? It is usually a particular occupation. For example, it can be a certain trade, it can be a certain profession, it can be any academic field, etc. But any in-group or social group to which a person psychologically identifies himself or herself to be a member of can also be, um, you know, context of the creation of a jargon. So, you know, for example, if um, I am a um, teacher, I would have a certain, uh, you know, kind of language that I would use. That particular choice of vocabulary that I would use as a teacher would be a jargon or if I am a doctor the particular kind of vocabulary the word choices that I would use would be the, 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 the jargon that I would use as a lawyer or as a doctor. But if I have a kind of a social um, psychological identification with a particular kind of group if I think for example I psychologically think that I'm an artist. So my vocabulary choices would reflect that as well. So, you know, it does not have to be necessarily um, an on-ground real profession. It can be a psychological association with any particular field or with any particular profession or with any particular trade, etc. Well, my dear students, the main trait that distinguishes jargon from the rest of a language is special vocabulary. So the important thing that you need to notice, and I'm underlining it here as well, is special vocabulary. What makes a jargon a jargon is the special vocabulary, including some specific words to it and often different senses of meanings to the words. So there can be peculiar words, A. B, there can be the same words that are as are used in our everyday language, but there would be peculiar or particular meanings attached to them. And that outgroups would tend to take those meanings in another sense or in a different sense. And if they are shared with them, they would misunderstand them. They would not be able to understand the meaning, how it is used, um, how that particular word is used with reference to a particular meaning in a particular field or in a particular profession. Thus, jargon is most of the times, um, here I am also underlining it, technical terminology or it is more like characteristic idiom of a special activity or of a special group. For example, um, the idiom of footballers, which means the kind of particular vocabulary that footballers use. Most of the times jargon is technical terminology involving terms of art or industry terms with particular meanings um, specified to that particular industry. Well, uh, main driving force in the creation of this technical jargon is Precision. You know, instead of explaining something and going for circumlocutions to explain something, going round about, you know, to make it clear to the other person, these terminologies are used. The purpose is to create precision. What is the second force behind? What is the second purpose behind? That is efficiency. You know, making communication efficient so that exactly, clearly what is to be meant is said. Now the problems or the issues related to the term. Of course, there are some side effects as well, some problems as well. So what is the side effect or what is the problem? A very high threshold of comprehensibility. What does it mean? It means if a doctor is talking to a doctor and using jargon, doctor's jargon, the other people, for example, the patients won't be able to understand that. To understand that a very high level of or a very high threshold of, you know, comprehensibility is required. It is also usually accepted as a trade-off, but is sometimes even used as a means of social exclusion. Now, how it is used for social exclusion? For example, a doctor wants to talk to a doctor 
and there are some patients sitting as well. The doctor does not want the patients to know what he or she is talking about to the other doctor. So socially excluding these patients from that, you know, using jargon, this special terminology, this special vocabulary, you know, um, I hope you would have experienced this, this sometimes in your life as a patient where you don't really understand how a doctor is talking to a nurse and what does it mean or how a doctor is talking to another doctor and you don't understand what they're talking about, your disease, etc. So, you know, this is an exclusion policy. Reinforcing in-group or out-group barriers. You know, who should understand this? Who would be in the group? Who would be outside the group? Creating those kind of uh, boundaries and sometimes of course for social aspiration you know sometimes just to impress people oh I am a doctor oh I am a lawyer oh I am an artist to impress other people you use certain jargon certain vocabulary of that profession there are many examples of jargon that exist because of its use among specialists and subcultures alike. I would like to share with you some examples from different um, professions and from different fields of life. Here, my dear students, on the screen, you can see I have given the examples of legal jargon. If you look at the screen, on the leftmost side, the legal jargon is given. Uh, what does it mean is given here, it is explained here, and this is, by the way, the pronunciation for that, that is given for your convenience as well. So, uh, a posteriori is from letter. When in, in legal um, documents, uh, an argument is derived from subsequent event, this term is used. Another term, a priori, which means from earlier. In legal um, discussions when, or in legal documents, when an argument derived from previous event is referred to, this is the term that is used. A cue, which means from which. This is regarding a court below in an appeal, either a court of first instance or an appellate court known as the court of cue. And there are more terms like ab extra, for example, which means from outside. So, it is used concerning a case when a person may have received some funding from a third party. Here I am showing you um, some examples of jargon from another field and that is the jargon from computing. And I am sure because of the lot of use, because of the increase in the use of um, computer technology, IT in our lives, um, many of us are aware of these. However, there would still be some that would be new for you. For example, CD-ROM. What is a CD-ROM? Compact disc read-only memory. This is a pre-pressed compact disc which contains data or music playback. A chip. Well, we are familiar with this term. Integrated circuit. This is a miniaturized electronic circuit. Control store. This is the memory that stores the microcord of a CPU. Core, the portion of a CPU which actually performs arithmetic and logical operations. So, you know, these are different jargons. These are different vocabulary items. This is the specialized vocabulary, in fact, that is used in the field of computing. There are some more examples from computing jargon. For example, core memory. Now, maybe this, this is what you would not be probably, as uh, laypersons, we would not be aware of. Core memory in modern usage is a synonym for main memory dating back from the pre-semiconductor chip times when the dominant main memory technology was magnetic core memory. So, you know, this is highly technical as you can uh, see this. CPU, again, probably uh, one of the jargons that we are quite familiar with, central processing unit. This is a portion of a computer system that executes the instructions of a computer program. And one more example, conventional PCI. Again, um, some of us may know this jargon. For some of us, it may be very technical. It stands for Conventional Peripheral Component Interconnect. That is a computer bus for attaching hardware devices in a computer. Well, my dear students, there are some examples of corporate jargon for you as well. And, you know, known as corporate speak or corporate lingo um, or business speak, or business jargon as well. Sometimes it is also called management speak or workplace jargon. 
So, you know, this is the jargon that is often used in corporations, in bureaucracies, and in offices and in workplaces. In fact, the use of corporate jargon, also known as corporatacy, is criticized for its lack of clarity because it is, um, it is uh, not very much clear, as well as for its stadium that is making meaning and intention opaque, not letting the meaning and intention being clear and thus making the understanding of it difficult. So, you know, overall the conclusion that we draw from all this is that jargon is a specialized vocabulary that is used in a particular field or a profession by the, by the, the users or by the specialists of that field.